I'm a 17-year-old female coffee lover who loves my job at America's favorite coffee shop. It's hard work, but it pays off. I love my job, but due to the pandemic, which has made schools unbearable for all of us and I'm just lucky that I work at a bake shop because otherwise my entire day would be spent in dangerous weather conditions. My workplace is located on the rough side of town, a place where robberies are common. A regular customer of ours was robbed four times last year, and once this past March. The store got robbed again about an hour after I began my shift. He pulled up to the front in his car five minutes later, but then he went inside without closing his driver door. I said good morning, and immediately stared off into space. After he said hi back, I started to hear a car speed away, and then just like that, it was gone. The customer is unhappy. He starts yelling first towards the direction of where the car was. Then he asks me, why didn't you want me? I decline to answer, and he calls me a jerk. I didn't see it happen. He then told me I should have been paying attention to paying customers, and that had called corporate to report me for not doing my job. He even said that he would sue the company if his car wasn't found. The customer spent the next half an hour making calls, occasionally calling me a stupid bitch to whoever he is on the phone with. My manager came soon after and I told him about the incident manager told me to go home because I was nearly about to cry because the customer seemed like it was my fault the car got stolen. Yeah, I should have been paying attention and plus, honestly, I was really tired. I feel partially at fault for this and my friends who I told. Thought I was too, but they said it wasn't entirely my fault was I the ass off for not paying attention, causing a customer's car to get stolen edits. My last opening shift is this Tuesday. My manager has given me like two weeks off to collect myself because I feel guilty and don't want to show my face at work. Thank you guys for telling me your perspective. While I might not be at fault, I personally still feel like I'm somewhat responsible. Hell no. You're not responsible in any shape or form and your friends or assholes are even pointing it in your direction in the slightest. What? What were they expecting you to do? You could. You could literally say, yeah, there's a guy jumping in your car and what's that gonna achieve? He ain't gonna get out there in time anyway. And it's not like you can run and jump on the front of the car. Fucking hell. What a moron that guy is. And let him try to sue as well. He ain't gonna get nowhere with it because he left his keys in his car with the engine running. His insurance will say he shouldn't be doing that in the first place. So his insurance will be invalid and it'll be totally his fault. So it's not your fault in the slightest, but let's have a look in the comments below to see what we can see. Not Michelle says. Not the asshole. You didn't steal the car, you didn't have someone steal the car. And even if you've been paying attention, there was nothing you could have done to stop someone from stealing the car. This customer is an asshole. Kelly Tom says, seriously, it sounds like the dude is blaming you just because it's easier than kicking himself for it. Final Particular says, not the asshole. He left the door open with his keys in ignition on the rough side of town. Your job is to serve the customers, not watch their personal property. Purple Stars in the Sky says this, he's an idiot. Even if you had seen in the car being stolen, the thief would have probably gotten away with it, and there is nothing you or the customer could have done to stop him, not the asshole. Hope your manager was on your side, and I turned this story to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Do you think OP was in the fault in anywhere at all? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to vote on the poll in the description. Our next story comes from Whisper202. Am I the asshole 18 female for not wanting to follow a stupid tradition? So my family and I were talking about my future and I told them how I want to get married and I have a few kids and I already have names picked out. My mom told me good luck and how she didn't even get to name any of us kids that she birthed. 
She told me that she wanted to name me this name, but her mother-in-law was against it and was being sarcastic, telling my mom she should just call me that on her own, but my name would be what it is now, and that's its tradition for the man's parents to pick a name for your kid. I was annoyed by this, but said I wouldn't let that happen to myself or my kids. And if I'm going to be carrying a baby for nine long, hard months, and then birthing it out of me, then I'll definitely be the one naming it along with my husband also, apparently it's tradition to not know your baby's gender. But like I said, I'll still know. I just won't tell anyone until it's born. I'm pretty superstitious when it comes to the evil eye. So I told them my pregnancy will be very discreet and low-key, and no one know I'm even going into birth until or after I've had my baby. But they thought me insisting on naming my own child was rude and disrespectful to my future in-laws update. I've learned recently that, that this is a family tradition on the girl's part to give their in-laws the authority in a sense of respect and make them feel important. So none of this has even happened yet. This is all like hypothetical stuff and your mom has already said, so like, I've been fucked up my entire life, so should you now. Nice one mom, SHG can says, your mom is now upset because you are disrespecting your hypothetical future in-laws. By disregarding a tradition, they may or may not follow and that she herself wished she did not have to follow your mom's caught up in some kind of mentality that is foreign to me, which is why I'm refraining from calling this dumb. Not the asshole. Redhead Tyrant says, this mentality is called I had to suffer. So that means you do too. Salek says, I, I forgot the name right? Reminds me of hazing. In college I suffered, so it's not fair. You don't suffer it too. Says, not the asshole tan that you can't name your own child. This is a shitty, disrespectful tradition. D.O.P. replies, tell me about it. Imagine carrying a baby for more than half a year, only to not be able to have the right to name them. And once again, I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to vote on the poll in the description, first story too. Our next story is called Am I the As of a Tell of My Wife, she's acting like a hypocrite in the following situation, I took my kids, Mike and Sarah, 7 male and 11 female, with me to the local basketball court where I play with my friends. They usually bring their kids as well, so they all have, company Mike got in a mini argument with another kid about the rules of the game they were playing and Sarah intervened but did not take his side. My son got frustrated, stopped playing with the other kid and came to watch the grown-ups play. I asked him why he was alone and he told me what happened. I called my daughter to come sit with us and told him that I don't care who was right or wrong here, partly because there was no right or wrong here, just the difference of opinion slash preference. They were arguing about different house rules of a specific basketball game, but I wanted them to understand that they should always have each other's backs when arguing with other people. Even if they happen to disagree, at least they can do a stay out of it if they disagree so much instead of making things worse for their sibling. I told my wife what happened when we got home a couple of hours later and she thought I handled it wrong and that I should have told Sarah that it's not okay to voice her opinion. I told her that she was missing the point and I wasn't asking her to voice her opinion in general. I was just asking both of them not to voice their opinions publicly against each other. She still disagreed and claimed that this is not what Sarah understood. Most likely, according to my wife, what Sarah would take from this, that it's not okay to disagree with people and that she said she didn't want to raise a woman that doesn't have the courage to speak her mind. I told her she was giving our daughter too little credit and asked how the situation was any different from that time and early in our relationship when we had a fight about me correcting her in front of our friends. Well, how it was different from when we agreed to not undermine each other as parents in front of the kids. I, she said it was different because we are adults, but it was more important for our kids, Sarah, especially because she's a girl, to learn that it's okay to speak up in their formative years. I ended up telling her that the fact that she's a girl is irrelevant and I refuse to treat our kids differently in the situation on the basis of gender and told her she's acting like a hypocrite. 
To which she responded, I was acting like an asshole, which brought us here we go straight down in the comments for this one with Nut Michelle saying, you are the asshole. If your son is wrong, he's wrong. His sister having his back doesn't make him less wrong and instead also makes her look ignorant. This wasn't a situation of getting bullied and your daughter joined in to help hoist up the bucket of pig's blood. He was legitimately wrong about the rules of a game. You were wrong here, salesman, but he says, did we read the same post? No. Did the father say the son is wrong? His house rules for pickup games. This is no right or wrong. It's about preference, and everyone agrees for that game or games. Twitch Nut Share replies. You read the edit. That OP only added after being told how wrong they were by multiple people. Beck1 says, you are the asshole. Always have your family's back. No matter if they're right or wrong. It's a ridiculously stupid idea, a ban that says, and when this is forced onto children growing up who later get abandoned by the same people, it really fucks a person up. Huggy Monster 69 also replies. Also, having someone's back is very different to not contradicting them. And once again, I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to vote on the poll in the description on next stories called Am I the Ass Asshole for Burning My Mom's Diaries, Letters and Writings because I don't want anything to do with her instead of giving them to my siblings. You can probably guess that I had a strained relationship with my mother. She had an affair while married to my dad. She ended up leaving my dad for her affair partner. My dad was a good man before the affair. But he took it hard and allowed it to destroy him. I was allowed to play son and parent to him while my mother started a new family. It was hard to watch her play mom to her new children and pretended like I didn't exist. I might occasionally get a call from her, but she was so busy raising her new kids that she just didn't have time for me. It was also hard to understand why those kids had so much more than me. We were poor and why she was okay with that. As I got older teens, she did try to re-establish a relationship with me, but I wasn't interested. She was still trying to mend fences when she died last year, but I will at least give her credit for trying. She tried very hard to have a relationship with me, but my heart was too hard and for that to be possible. One of the things she left me were her diaries from the time she was a teenager. She also left me some letters she had kept over the years and some writings. My hope was that I would read them and get to know her better. She wasn't expecting me to forgive her, but there was no way of trying to make up for the years. We had a little contact. My siblings knew about this and asked if they could make copies. Once I was done with them, I didn't promise them anything. Those diaries sat in my study slash home office for many months. I didn't want to read them, but I felt like I needed to do something. It was a friend of mine that suggested I burn them as a catharsis, which is what I decided to do. I went over to his place one weekend and we burned all of it. He was right. It did make me feel better. I feel like I can now be done with her forever. When my siblings found out they were upset. They told me I had no right to do it. Now, if I didn't want the diaries, I should have given them away, but I told them that they were mine to do with as I pleased, and I had every right to burn them if I wanted. My wife said she agreed with them and thought that my decision was spiteful. She said she felt like I might have even wanted to do it, so my siblings could not have the diaries as a way of punishing them. She also feels like it could have been an opportunity for healing as a family. That is now lost. My wife bases their opinions on the fact that I didn't discuss my plan with which she thinks is because I knew she'd urged me not to do it. I don't agree with her take. I did this cause I felt like this is what I needed to do to move on from this situation. But am I the asshole? And now, don't get me wrong, I can see how ops prob, but I can't see O's feeling. I'm not never been in that situation. 
But I can kind of understand, I can kind of empathize that they must be really hurt mentally. You know, from watching this other family grow up after the affair and having all this in the back of your mind constantly and growing up poor, when you sin her, grow up quite, quite wealthy by the sounds of it and all this in the back of your head, so you're thinking, well, fuck her, you know? But at the same time, you know, those diaries could have gone to the, to the rest of the family. You didn't have to see them again. You could just give them, and you would have never seen them again. You would have never known any different. You could have told them, here's the diaries. But I never, ever once see those again. Never have them in my sight. And that would have been it. You'd never seen them. You didn't really have to burn them. I'm gonna say, you are the asshole in this situation. There's a very light, you are the asshole though. Nut. Michelle says, oh, you're getting everywhere today. You are the asshole. If you didn't want them, her other children who they'd had sentimental value for should have had them. This was a really selfish thing to do, which hurt your siblings and nobody else. Taco Bailey says there is no reason op, you couldn't have let your siblings make copies before you burned them. They spiteful and hateful like your dad. You've let this destroy you as well. You and those around you will benefit from getting professional help. You are the asshole. Edit. I'm reading your responses and honestly, I'm feeling really sad for you. You've lost all opportunity now to visit what she wrote in her diaries. I think you're really going to regret this choice. This has to be a heavy feeling to have right now. Lavender Trainer says, I agree, op, you need urgent therapy. Your father is an adult and made his own decisions, as did your mother. Your father is just as much at fault. For you growing up poor as your mother is? My family had a similar structure, but all three parents ensured that their children stay out of adult problems. I would never do that to my step-siblings, and they wouldn't to me. Your mother made constant attempts to have a relationship with you and you made a decision to push against them. She loved you enough to respect that you did this out of spite and pure jealousy. You need to seek help before you allow your past to affect your future. I scrolled a bit further down because a lot of the comments are the same. I found this one AAR says, to be honest, I've gotta go with an unpopular, no one's an asshole here. From what you're saying, your mom basically abandoned you. I went through something similar, the affair, the leaving, etc. She and I didn't talk for a good 10 years. She never reached out and even though we had somewhat of a relationship now, we text every few weeks. I still resent her for what she did. I can empathize with you on that matter. At the end of the day, she left those to you and the kids, she ignored you for wanted them. If she wanted them to have them, she would have given to them in the first place. But she gave them to you. If you had promised them copies, that's one thing, but you didn't, you're just as entitled to closure as anyone else. And if burning them is what it took, so be it. I'm sorry you went through that. No, I don't think there is any asshole here. I do think you should seek therapy, though it might resolve some very trauma edit. Thanks for the award guys. I'm glad I'm not the anyone who thinks OP was in the right and once again, I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on the poll in description. I'm next door is titled I'm the ass of for warning my male friend about my slutty best friend. Am I the ass off warning my male friend about my slutty best friend? So that sounds weird, but let me explain on my mobile, so sorry for any format errors, I have this friend who is really, really slutty. She's married and has three kids, but still takes any opportunity to sleep with whoever she can on the side and keeps it from her husband. At one point she had four boyfriends, plus her husband, and none of them knew about each other. 
When she was pregnant with her third child, she, me lied to one of her boyfriends as to why she wasn't drinking at the anime convention. I don't mind a healthy poly relationship, but she is straight out cheating. Now, why do I warn my male friends? You ask, rewind to my 21st birthday. I'd never drank before, so I got very drunk very quickly. I spent the day with her and we got a hotel, and after my male best friend got off work, we invited to hang out at the hotel with us so we could hang out in the hot tub. Now I'm a flirt, but I never mean it with her. She's practically my sister, and I have no idea where any of this came from. We got to the hotel and I was so drunk. I laid down for a minute and passed out for hours. When I finally kind of woke up, I didn't really move, just kind of woke up and listened. In horror. My two best friends are having sex in the other bed. It stopped because her husband called and she went into the bathroom and sat up asking my guy friend what the fuck was going on. He was hammered and horny. She came on to him and he didn't honestly care. I didn't blame him. He was drunk and she was flirting with him. When I asked her, she said she wanted to have a threesome, but I fell asleep. What? No. She said she thought I knew, but I have no idea where any of that came from. I love her, but not like that. The moral of these stories is she's kind of a slut and will sleep with my friends and other guys. We'll flirt with any attractive male who even talks to her. We'll, skip to this week, I'm going to an anime convention this summer, and my friend, a very attractive paramedic, he's coming to see me for the first time in person. I couldn't be happier, but my lady friend is coming too, and I'm so scared that she will flirt with him and make him uncomfortable. Am I the ass off for warning that she's kind of slutty and that she will most likely flirt with him and try to sleep with him? Edit. Can you please stop assuming you're upset because she wants to flirt with my friend? Is he hot? Yes. Is that why I don't want her to flirt? No. I don't want my friend to be uncomfortable. He isn't in a good place mentally, and this isn't an escape for him. Let's rewind to the start. She's married and has three kids and she just sleep. She was sleeping with four boyfriends at one stage and none of them knew about each other. I'm sorry, but it just makes you the asshole for enabling this kind of behavior that you're letting her get a get go and do this kind of thing. It's absolutely shitty behavior. What an awful person. And I'm not directing that totally. I'm not directing that op. I'm directing this other person who's just sleeping around. Willy, nearly Willy's kind of the wrong word to be using there, but hey, I think you should let her poor family know what she's actually doing behind this guy's back. It's absolutely ridiculous. But Tutu Dinosaur says, you're the ass for supporting your cheating friend and enabling her throwaway 42 says, not only cheating, but sounds like potential paternity fraud, which is so much worse. Op replies to that. I don't enable her and I don't support her cheating, but she's a grown adult and doesn't listen to me. Something comes here, replies to that saying, so why don't you tell her husband, she's risking his health by sleeping around behind his back. Op then replies. I didn't talk to her husband. He wouldn't trust me, and I don't want to put that on her kids. Honestly, I probably should tell her husband, but I don't want to ruin her. Marriage. Rap Face Killer says her marriage was already ruined by her and then the OP stopped replying to that string. Someone else further below said, I'm calling fake on this. I'm exhausted just reading this. How can someone have that much energy for so many boyfriends? And then, someone else replies. Twitch streamer Katarino is the most recent popular victim of cheating and he was previously engaged to Call Me Carson. He has been cheating on multiple other individuals and it's difficult to keep track of the affair. So far, this is a good story. But before I turn it to you guys for the final time, let me know what you think of it in the comments below. 
Don't forget to vote on the poll at the end of story 5. Hi, thank you for coming today. We appreciate your support. I'm so glad you enjoyed this video. If you want the chance to reap more rewards from it, please keep watching and enjoy the benefits I mentioned. Stay healthy and may this be a beautiful day.